All right. Hello, hello. Deanna Your Fave Stylist here with a beauty tidbit. This beauty tidbit today is for the salon owners, okay? The beauty tidbit today is about why it is important to go through with background checks, even if you are a booth rental salon, even if you're a commission salon, even if you're an hourly employee salon, because I'm gonna tell you a quick little story that happened to me that um, really turned out very horrible for business, reputation, my reputation, reputation of the other stylists at the salon, uh, my reputation afar in a different state, and all of this could have been avoided had I done a simple follow through background check, okay? So, there was a time I hired a young lady and she was, you know, kind of scruffy looking on the edges and stuff like that. But I figured, you know what, everybody needs a chance. She was very honest about her uh, background, which wasn't the best background that somebody could come from. I'm not, you know, going to put anybody's, all of nobody's business out there. But so anyway, the background that was verbally told was, um, you know, it was honest. And so it made me say, you know what, if this young lady can come from this type of background and be honest about it, then you know what, I'm going to give her a chance, right? So I decide to give the stylist a chance. So I happen to know one of the people that one of the hair salons that this stylist used to work for, the owner of that salon actually worked for me for a month or two, even though she had her own salon. We kind of had a collab thing going on where she was going to work with me for a little bit so that I can teach her some things about how I ran my business and she could take it back and implement it into her business, right? So, you know, we knew what the end game was to us working together and we ended up not working together much more after that because of that, you know, it was supposed to be for a short amount of time. But anyway, the young lady that I ended up hiring used to work for the other salon owner where we kind of did the collab thing. And once I asked the young lady about working there, she would always say, oh, you know, she accused me of some hair that she was saying that I used and I told her that I didn't and da 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 The story just sounded kind of off and unfinished. That never did it register to my head. Let me call my homegirl and ask her what happened. Why? I don't know because it had been like, I guess a year or two since I had spoken to her and you know, we didn't stop on bad terms or anything. So you would have thought, Deanna, why didn't you call a check on her? I'm going to tell you why. Because at one point in time, I was so hell bent on just making sure that I had somebody in that chair to make sure that booth rent was being taken care of so I wouldn't end up working overtime to pay the bills at this new building that I have that I was almost just at one point in time I was willing and able to take anybody that was willing to just pay their dang on booth rent but I paid for that so this young lady ended up being a hustle bunny I'm talking about from the first week that she came to work with me, booth rent every single week with clients, without clients. She paid her booth rent, okay? She would hustle up clients. She was more than a hustler than some of the honest people that I know. She would find a way to make it work, okay? Like she would out hustle a crackhead. Anyway, <clears throat> a time and place comes and it's time for all the girls in my salon to go to a hair show first of all half my team ended up dropping out of going to the hair show like two or three days before the hair show which left everybody in a screwed up spot including myself and the few of us that did go ended up paying way more money because the ones that committed didn't commit it was a whole mess right that's another video anyway this young lady ends up going and you know we get there everything's fine and um 
we had a good time but as soon as there was three of us that went and then as soon as we got to the hair show this particular young lady we gonna call her chica chica as soon as she got a brief moment classes started immediately she just disappeared we did not know where this young lady went every single day of the classes after we determined what we was gonna do for the day it was like she didn't say bye I'll talk to y'all later nothing like that she was just gone right so I'm like, okay, that's kind of weird, but you know, whatever, we all grown, you know, we all got our own hotel, key room, whoop de boop we ain't got to know where each other's at all the time, right? We don't, but you know, come to find out, make a long story short, we get all the way back to our salon. This hair show was in um, Los Angeles, California. We get all the way back to Tucson, Arizona. A day or two has gone by. We had a good time at the hair show. Uh, we had a few issues. The car was acting up and we ended up having to take the car back to get another car and all this other stuff. You know, just small little issues that comes with traveling and things like that. Um, so we decide, all right, it's time for us to get back to Tucson. We stayed for the entire three days of the hair show. Man, we came back to Tucson. And when we came back to Tucson, it was a Monday. So our salon business hours are Tuesdays through Saturdays. So me and the other young lady that stayed with me, there was three of us. This wasn't Chica. We don't call the other lady Susie. You all know that's my favorite name, Susie. So... <clears throat> Me and Susie didn't go back to work on Tuesday because we was just resting our nerves from traveling and stuff. But thank God we didn't. Because lo and behold, I find out that Chica has sticky fingers, right? So we done took Chica with us to LA at a hair show. I wake up Tuesday I'm looking at my social media and somebody from the hair show if in LA is posting on the Mel Virus Hair Studio page about how one of our ladies from the hair show has stolen her telephone. I don't know which one of y'all it is. But I've seen all three of you guys at the hair show this weekend and I recognize the faces. So I know <coughs> that one of you ladies have taken my phone. Okay. So now I'm like, what in the world is she talking about? How does she know that one of us took her phone? It's thousands of people at this day going hair show in LA. Why on earth would she narrow down the girls from Melvira's hair studio, right? So she's like, you know sending all these messages and I finally get in contact with the girl and I'm like hey hey you know I don't know what's going on but um this is definitely not the way to go about getting your phone because if it's anywhere in Tucson and I can help you I'm not gonna help you if you're gonna go online and blast my salon as if every single person from my salon just came to LA and took your phone so the lady starts to tell me she said well I, I do need your help. I'm really sorry. I was upset. Blah, blah, blah. But let me let me be a little bit more civilized about it. I'm an Uber driver and I need my phone to make money. And I'm a beauty school student. And somebody from the hair show stole my phone. And so when I tracked my phone, you know, because technology, you can track phones back to where they're at when they get turned on. So she said, I tracked my phone from LA to Tucson. And when my phone was turned on Tuesday morning, cause I believe this was Wednesday when I was talking to the girl now. She's like, when my phone was turned on Wednesday morning, um, it was tracked at your salon and it was tracked at these apartments. Now here's the thing. There was only one person <laughs> that actually had been to LA, 
came back, went to Melvira's hair studio, <clears throat> and then went to those apartments. Mind you, it wasn't even apartments. It was like the school right beside the apartments, which that hairstylist's son just happened to go to school right there, right? So, okay. I'm adding it together, and I'm like, Lord, Chica done stole somebody's iPhone. Somebody's $600 something iPhone. This child done stole it, brought the stolen property back with us, didn't say nothing, done went to work, was dumb enough to turn the phone on at the job and at the apartments or the school wherever her child went to school at. <clears throat> so, long story short, this young lady really showed out the one that was missing her telephone. This child called the hotel that we stayed at and told them about some girls that came from Tucson that stole her phone and she needs help pressing charges and blah, blah, blah. She spoke to the manager of the dang one hotel we stayed at. This child called the producer of the actual hair show. The producer of the hair show. We the only three people from Tucson at this hair show. Um, this young lady called the police in Tucson, Arizona. Had the police come to my salon, which I just happened to see on camera because nobody was present that day. Um, and it was just a very, very big mess. She blasted us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, whatever she could get in contact with to connect to somebody with her phone. She was very relentless and very, very rude. So that experience was one experience that I do not wish on anybody in the beauty industry that owns a business. I think as business owners, sometimes we think with our hearts and we want to give people a chance and things like that. But when stuff like this happens, it really makes you think twice about thinking with your heart when it comes to business. Like, you know, ever since that situation, I have been strictly on some boofering is due on this date. And if you don't have it, it's a late fee. Um, if you don't got what you need, maybe you don't need to be here. <laughs> you know, um, I have been on like, you know, it's crazy. Uh, I could go on into detail about chica um you know i had really put my neck on the line for this hairstylist but all of this could have been avoided had i called the hair salon that she used to work for which i was already homegirls with her but i was so hell-bent on trying to get booth rent and making sure that i had somebody to secure booth rent that i was willing to put up with almost any dang one thing um and then you know just not really putting in the effort to go out there and find other stylists, um, you know, doing a background check or maybe even just believing that young lady when she told me about her background. But you would think when somebody tells you about their background, you're like, oh, my God, they're being so honest about that. Like, why would they tell anyone about that? You know, so this was a learning experience for you business owners people that are thinking about becoming a business owner it don't even have to be a hair salon like really really figure out your background checking steps and stages and actually go through them i don't care if it's a friend or a cousin of a hairstylist of yours or whatever like there has to be something set in place so that you can protect yourself as a business owner because if you don't and you start thinking with your heart um, as a business owner, because business is business. It's a mind thing. There's a little bit of your heart in it, but for the most part, you're supposed to be using your brain. And if them numbers ain't adding up, then it's just time for you to make some changes, you know, because especially if you're a booth renter salon, like you're hiring people that know how to run their own individual business. They know how to gain themselves clientele and take care of their booth rent and, um, they are responsible and they don't have sticky fingers and stuff like that. So be careful, do background checks. And sometimes it takes a little bit of discernment. It takes a lot to sort through people and figure out what you can offer them and how you guys can work together. But there's a million people on the planet Earth. You did not have to settle for one just because that's the one in your face. So to all you up and coming business owners or just people that have to work with people be gentle on yourself 
Use your brain and not your heart whenever it is about business. Do your background checks.